Recording in progress. Hello, welcome back. So now let's pick up where we have left off and uh, start launching the instance. To do that, click this orange button here, launch that says launch instance, which leads you to a launch wizard. So step one is to choose an Amazon machine image. What is that? It's essentially an operating system uh, for your EC2 instance. Well, uh, uh, together with some applications and application servers, as explained. So you can choose a bare metal um, vanilla Ubuntu instance, so Ubuntu image, and then configure everything on yourself. Or you can make your life a bit easier and use one of those prepackaged um, AMIs for deep learning. So I would recommend the Ubuntu based AWS Deep Learning AMI and Deep Learning Base AMI. And the difference is listed below. And essentially, the Deep Learning AMI contains a pre configured Anaconda environment with multiple machine learning packages and deep learning frameworks. Uh, of course, the downside is that it occupies much more space because it has more, uh, many deep learning frameworks, uh, including TensorFlow and PyTorch. For deep learning based AMI, you will have to configure your own Anaconda environment which well, I will show you in the, circuit, in the third part of the, of the video, of the recitation. Right, so for the purpose of this recitation, let me just choose a deep learning AMI. Wait, if you are a first time user, you will, need to go, you will probably need to go to the marketplace uh, and uh, select this, this AMI and agree on some terms and conditions. So let me just select the deep learning AMI. And the second step is to choose an instance type. As you can see, it lists every instance type available uh, in this region in, not, in a not so user friendly list. So, to learn more about the various instance types, you can go to this page. Uh, yeah. And for example, there's memory optimized, accelerated computing, and all that other stuff. To make your life a bit easier, uh, I have uh, jotted down a list of recommended instance types you will be using for, this, uh, for training your models. So the first two instance types are, mer are merely for testing, and I don't well, and uh, I do not recommend them for uh, training at all. So the third one, G4DN X Large, is my will be my recommendation for model training. It has a good configuration, a um, OK GPU, and what an additional one hundred twenty five gigabytes of storage for uh, let's say storing your the unpacked training data. So P3 has, is, has a much better configuration, a much better GPU, but it's also more expensive. So use it with caution. Right, so in our case, let, let me just use G4DN. Uh, yep, yeah, G4DN X large. Um, do not click review and launch, click next. Now, most of these settings are not really relevant. But uh, I, I would like to, to, to talk about the purchasing option here. You can select the spawning instance and you can make the spawning instance uh, persistent, which will give you a drop down list for interruption behavior. So what are those? Well, if you do not click the request spawning instance uh, tick box, you'll be using an on-demand instance. If you, use, uh, if you click, tick, uh, click the, that, that tick box, you'll be using spawning instance. Uh, what be it a, a persistent spawning instance or one-time spawning instance. So spawning instance is subjected to spawn capacity in your satellite region when you are spinning up. So sometimes you may not be able to spin up, but that's rare. And spawning instance can also be interrupted. Uh, for persistent, you will, be you, will, you will be stopped or put to hibernation, but for one time, you will just be terminated. Right. For but although there, there might be interruptions, in my uh, experience, it is rare, but it will happen. So if you want to stop an, inst a, an instance, you should, you should go to the instance page. And for one time, you cannot stop it. If you want to terminate an, an instance, you should, go to the, you should go to different pages for different types of instances. And of course, um, the, the biggest difference between on-demand and, and small instance is the price. Since you are suffering so much, AWS is giving you up to 90% discount. For G4DN, I think this is more like 70% but still very significant. You can learn about the pricing for on-demand and spot instance on these pages. So for on-demand, it's this page. Uh, select your region, let's say Ohio, and the, here are the, the pricing. Uh, for spot instance, 
This is a spot insurance pricing page. And select, again, select the Ohio, US East Ohio. Let's say for G4DN, this is the amount that was shown in the launch wizard here, right? So uh, note that although there is a Hibernate option, the, sub the selected instance type G4DN does not, does not support it. Right, so for this case, in this case, I'll just be using a one-time spot instance. Put in a maximum price that is, that is higher than the current price. So take note that once the current price reaches above the maximum price you set, your, your instance will be uh, interrupted. But uh, in my experience, the pricing is pretty stable in US East Ohio. Well, okay, just to take note, that only applies to spot instance and not on demand instance. Well, so step four at storage, as you can see, is minimally 100 GB. And you, are, you also have 125 GB of uh, ephemeral storage. Right, so tax is not important for us. And the let's go to security group. By default, it creates a new security group every time you, you launch a new EC2 instance. But I would not recommend that. Uh, so I would recommend selecting the existing security group and config. I think there is a conf default security group which, in which you can modify in the EC2 uh, management console and uh, um, add, add, some proper, pro add some inbound and outbound rules as you wish. For example, my security group allow allows only SSH only from my IP address and custom rules that allows EFS and Jupyter access. Right, so now let's click launch. And just one more thing. You need to, act, you need to use a key pair, a, a private key to access the a newly created EC2 instance. If you don't have one, uh, simply select create a new key pair and uh, input a key name. Uh, as noted here, you, ha you have to store it uh, securely on, on your local drive since you will not be able to download the file again. Since I have an existing pair, I just select my pair and acknowledge it, and launch instance. As you can see, yeah, my spot instance is now launching. So let's click, let's go back to the uh, EC2 management console and see that our instance state is pending. Right, so uh, yeah, once it's running, we'll be able to connect to the instance. If, you, um, if you're using the SSH command line, you need to use the dash i option to uh, specify the key, the key pair file that you just downloaded. And, the, and, select, and uh, the username, since you're using, for username, since we are using a Ubuntu based image, the username will be Ubuntu. And uh, you need to use the IP address that's uh, shown here. For me, I'll be, I'll, I'll be using Mobile Xterm, a Windows based a, a GUI that allows easy, easy access to easy management of SSH sessions. So let me just replace this host IP with, my, with a new IP. As you can see, I already have the private key uh, configured. And, and also, also the username, as you can see are uh, here, Ubuntu. So now let me just uh, uh, authenticate it. And yeah, I'm in. As you can see, uh, it, the deep learning AMI provides a, a useful guide for you to see which environment you want to activate. For example, let me just want to, let's say I just want to activate uh, PyTorch. And, uh, well, it will take some, it will, it will take a while, but yeah, it's in, right? So you can see this is uh, a virtual environment for Python. Right, so some useful command line tools would be htop a CPU uh, and, and RAM usage ma uh, monitoring tool. Well, I think by default, the color is not very um, uh, easy to easy for the eyes. But yeah, now that I use choose a different color, you can see the RAM usage and CPU usage. And also the list of processors that are using the CPU. For GPU usage, we should use the NVIDIA SMI tool. So just type SMI. Well, this shows the uh, it shows the uh, GPU type, the GPU utilization, and the GPU uh, and the VRAM usage, and also the processors that's using GPU, if there are any. 
Right. So once you're done with the training with uh, training your model, you should shut down your instance. And there are two ways to, to stop a computer instance and stop AWS from charging you. Stop and terminate. Well, stop is essentially like shutting down a computer, whereas terminate is essentially throwing your computer in a trash comp in a trash compactor. So, uh, well, that is quite um, in that that is in lay layman's term. In well, in for in in, te in technicality, your boot disk is unaffected in, when you stop the instance, but it will be permanently erased when you terminate the instance. A firmware drive is also perm will always be will always be permanently deleted. Uh, no matter whether you stop or terminate the instance. So as noted here, the, the, hibernate, the, the hibernate option does not uh, uh, apply in, to our GPU-based instance types. All right, since I'm using a spot instance, I can, I can cancel it in two, in two places. Either the instance page, so I can select it and select instance state, and terminate. Or I can use the, uh, the spot request page and say cancel the spot request. This will automatically terminate the instance. All right. So that's, that's all for part two. And if you want to know more about uh, configuring your own environment and uh, accessing EFS, um, tune in, stay tuned for part three.